I want you to hit me as hard as you can. This Oscar-winning actress has an IQ of 140, which is considered a genius, apparently. Gina Davis instantly became a highly respected box office queen, starring in many creative, original, and even unusual smash hits of the 80s and 90s. But something happened on her quest for Hollywood treasure. After hitting a certain age, 40, and after having a few box office bombs, Cutthroat Island. This beauty seems to have driven right off the cliff. But where did she go? What happened? And why oh why is she not starring in like major motion picture blockbusters and iconic cult classics like every single day anymore? That's what she used to do. Why isn't she still doing it? Stay tuned as we take a deep dive into the life and career of Gina, the genius. And ask that most glorious clickbaity of questions. What the f happened to Gina Davis? <laughs> most people make their film debuts in films that they wish they could forget. But not Gina Davis, hers is unforgettable. That's right, her first film was the Academy Award nominated Tootsie. Davis was working as a model at the time when she was cast by director Sidney Pollack who told her that she would pretty much be in her underwear for most of the film. And Gina was totally cool with that because, you know, it's Tootsie. Tootsie pulled in $177 million in 1982 dollars, which is an insane $477 million in 2020 dollars. If, if you do that inflation math. $477 million? That's insane to think that this gender-bending movie about soap operas is making, like, frickin' superhero movie money. You, you, you go, girl. It's great, you should check it out. It's, it's like Mrs. Doubtfire, but, but older. In the 80s. 1982. Things have been so much better since you came to Southwest General. We're all so grateful to you. For? For your help and advice. Well, I really think of... <clears throat> you all is my, my, my daughters, and uh, what kind of mother would I be if I didn't give my girls tips? Tips. It's tips. Tips. Then Gina Davis quickly found work in television, also known as TV. And that's what she did from the years 1983 to 1985. She had a few bit roles in some TV juggernauts like Knight Rider, Family Ties, and Buffalo Bill. But it was a short-lived television series. I'm sorry. The show actually received several Emmy and Golden Globe nominations, but was canceled after two seasons due to low ratings. Then she was in a TV series called Sarah, uh, spelled without an H, landed the lead role in the sitcom about lawyers, imagine that, but the show was canceled after a single season. But after the success of Beetlejuice, which we'll talk about later, the show uh, was re-aired and gained a new following. Go Sarah. Then she was in the Chevy Chase classic, Fletch, playing a character named Larry. And Transylvania 6 5000? She played a nymphomaniac vampire in this film where she first met her future ex-husband, Jeff Goldblum. Oh, I want you so bad it hurts. Me too. Mm. Oh, yeah. mm. Then in 1986 came The Fly. Davis and Goldblum would reunite in this Cronenberg creature feature classic. The film remains one of the best reviewed horror films of all time, with critics appreciating the mix of gore and strongly developed characters. So here's some movie math for you: Good characters plus good gore equals good movie. And here's some more math for you. The movie made $60 million worldwide in 1986 dollars, so that would be even, even more dollars now. You, you can do the math. I'm not going to do the math. I've, I've, I've done too much math for this. I'm not supposed to be doing math for this. This is Joe Blow. Why am I doing math? And since Gina Davis was so amazing in The Fly, stealing every single scene from that that fly, and that led to the greatest year of her career, 1988, with the films The Accidental Tourist and Beetlejuice, one earning her an Oscar and the other going down as one of the most iconic films of all time. Also that year she made Earth Girls Are Easy, we'll talk about that too. But first, Beetlejuice. What do you think of this? <laughs> you like it? 
Excuse us, please. And Beetlejuice was a huge hit. It made $74 million, which would be, let me do the math, $162 million today. My goodness. And Gina Davis committed to the project immediately. She was so attracted to the unusual, bizarre, weird, outrageousness of this script, which almost every other actress in town turned down because, you know, it was too weird for them, but nothing is too weird for Gina Davis. That's what I always say. So she took a risk on this outrageous, out-of-the-box horror comedy. And you know what? Taking those risks on those weird movies has really paid off, because think about it. Beetlejuice, The Fly, Earth Girls Are Easy, all those films are really, really weird, and they all did wonders for her career. So here's a lesson for you kids. Always take weird risks, because they always pay off every single time, 100%. And of course, there has always been talk of a Beetlejuice 2, Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian or whatever. And I'm not sure if Gina Davis is going to be in that one or if they're ever going to make that one, but it could be a comeback for her, I don't know. They should probably just let this one rest in peace. Not risk it, not ruin it. Even though I just said taking risks are good. <laughs> But yeah, like I said, that same year also came Earth Girls Are Easy. This film follows three fuzzy aliens coming to Earth to fall in love with a girl from Earth, because, uh, as you fellow Earthlings know, Earth Girls Are Easy, apparently. And these fuzzy little alien creatures were perfectly cast with Damon Waynes and Jim Carrey, two years before in Living Color, and, of course, Jeff Goldblum, who would marry Gina Davis during the production of this movie. Let's hope he took off the makeup. But this was not very successful at the box office. Some would even call it a bomb. <coughs> and of course, we're still in 1988, that same year, the best year ever for Gina Davis came, The Accidental Tourist. Davis would win the Best Supporting Actress Oscar, which some believe she should have won the Best Actress Oscar because some people say she's more of a lead than a supporting, but I, I, I don't know, I, I don't, I don't even care, really. I'm just glad she got to take home her unholy golden idol. And before the Academy Awards ceremony, there were rumors going around Tinseltown amongst the critics that Gina Davis was totally not gonna get it. Some were saying because she's too pretty, some were saying because she's not pretty enough, I, I don't even know what that means. But of course, she surprised everyone and... and won! Beating all those other nominees. Beating them so bad, oh my god, she just beat them all. And The Accidental Tourist did okay at the box office, making $32 million. And I'm gonna do that stupid math again. That's $70 million in today's money. $70 million is... that's that's a lot of money for, for this kind of movie. Congrats! And critics generally enjoyed the film and most appreciated the rich characters. Like Gina Davis's character, the one that... that won her an Oscar. But some felt the film was a juggling act between comedy and drama, calling it an unsuccessful Woody Allen ripoff. But how dare they say such things? Maybe the three of us could go to a movie. You ever go to movies? I really don't care for movies. I, they make everything seem so close up. Then she kicked off the 90s with a movie called Quick Change, directed by Bill Murray. And many, many people loved this movie because of its amazing cast and its wonderful story about a heist gone wrong and Bill Murray dresses like a clown or something. Even though this was not a huge box office success, this film went on to become a cult classic. Are you a member of the cult? Comment your comment in the comments. Then in 1991 came Thelma and Louise. This feminist classic was directed by feminist hero Ridley Scott, and this film also introduced us to Brad Pitt's abs. Look at those things, my goodness. I didn't even know you could have that many. Gina Davis received her second Oscar nomination for this one. She didn't win because it was the year of Silence of the Lambs and Jodie Foster took it. And, you know, she deserved it. I love you, Thelma, or Louise, whichever one you are, but you're no match for Clarice. And when this film was first released, it was a decent hit, but has since gone on to become a huge cultural iconic classic. 
influencing lots of lots of people and and stuff. The film does a wonderful job of blending action with comedy and drama and girl power, and the entire movie rests on the shoulders of these two leading ladies and they handle it perfectly. These ladies delivered the cinematic goods. And you know your movie is a pop cultural phenomenon when it gets parodied left and right. Like with Wayne's World 2 and Family Guy. Hey, we don't want to end the movie like this. Yeah, let's do the happy ending. Yeah, yeah. Ah! Goodbye, terrible women. That world-famous critic Roger Ebert gave the film a near-perfect rating. He didn't like the ending, but, you know, he, he's wrong. But this film does have some controversy. It has been polarizing to many critics. Some see it as a true feminist film with a story that uplifts two strong female leads. And others consider it a misogynist look at two ditzy women with anger issues. And I say, why not both? But Gina Davis loved playing this empowering woman, and I liked watching this empowering woman. It's one of the best Ridley Scott movies out there. Speaking of powerful women, her next film was A League of Their Own. And this movie also made a lot of money, and I'm just, I'm so tired of doing the math. It made a lot of money in 80s money and in today's money, just lots of it. And this film, A League of Their Own, has had the honor of becoming one of the movies to be in the Library of Congress National Film Registry for being a culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant film. It's a, that's a really big honor. And of course, after this movie, everybody stopped crying in baseball. And I hear that there's gonna be a TV series remake of this on Amazon Prime. Maybe this could be a Gina Davis comeback, I don't know. And after A League of Their Own, Gina Davis starred in a string of films that had generally no lasting impact, but were okay, yet still forgettable, and didn't really ignite the box office. Films like Hero, it's good, and Angie, it's, it's alright, and Speechless, yeah, it's good too, but none of these were anything to write home about or even talk about. And in 1993, Gina Davis would marry director Rennie Harlan. Her new hubby saw the opportunity to reinvent her career as an action star. Sounded like a good idea, but unfortunately this led to one of the biggest box office failures of all time. A movie called Cutthroat Island. And uh, they would divorce less than four years later. See, I took your balls. This pirate flop lost nearly $100 million. At the time, and for several years after, this was the biggest flop of all time. Until Pluto Nash. The set was plagued with problems, everybody was having a horrible time on this horrible movie, which I actually really liked when I was a kid. And I, I still have those nostalgia goggles, so I kind of like it, I don't know. You know when you watch a movie as a kid and you really like it and then years later you find out that it's actually one of the worst movies of all time and you're like, oh, oh it was? And then you go back and you watch it and you're like, yeah, yeah it is. Well that kind of happened with Cutthroat Island. I don't know, it has some good scenes in it, it's fun, it's exciting, but actually you know what, I would rather watch Cutthroat Island than any of the Pirates of the Caribbean sequels. So, so that's saying something saying a lot actually but yeah cutthroat island it is uh, infamously one of the worst movies ever and it kind of left a stain on gina's career everywhere she went people were like uh there's that pirate lady who made a horrible pirate movie i don't want you in my movie what if what if my movie becomes a horrible pirate movie so people were kind of afraid to cast gina davis unfortunately it wasn't her fault she's pretty good in in this in this bad movie Then came the long kiss goodnight. The movie made a lot of money, but it also cost a lot of money to make, so it really can't be considered a success, but it can't really be considered a bomb either. It has all of the Shane Black ingredients you want in a movie. Great dialogue, great action, Christmas. The long kiss goodnight is up there with those non-traditional Christmas action movies, you know, like Die Hard, 
lethal weapon, stuff like that. She has wonderful chemistry with her co-star, Mr. Samuel L. Jackson, who says this is his favorite movie he's ever been in. And he's been in lots of good movies, so, so that's saying something. Gina Davis plays a former killer assassin who gets amnesia and becomes a housewife and then suddenly starts to remember that she's got skills. And I love it, I love it. It is the perfect 90s action movie. And it's got girl power too. And many people think that this film would have been bigger at the box office, but you know, the Cutthroat Island reputation was still following Gina Davis and that probably scared people away from the theaters. But this one can also be considered a cult classic. And are you a member of that cult? What cults are you a member of? And should I join? Comment your comment in the comments. Nineteen ninety six was a big year. Nineteen ninety six was the year that Gina Davis turned forty. And she has often said that after that milestone birthday, Gina Davis noticed that the roles that she was being offered started to dwindle. She wasn't getting those exciting wild characters that she was getting in her thirties. She was just getting boring people in their forties. So Gina Davis wasn't gonna play that game and you know, she took a few years off. Until the year 1999 when she played Miss Little in Stuart Little. And this is actually Gina Davis' biggest box office hit, making over $300 million worldwide. It's a lot of money. And she would reprise her role in the sequel and the threequel. Also in 1999, while she was making Stuart Little, she was training to be an Olympian. Gina Davis almost made the Sydney Summer Olympics as part of the US archery team placing 24th out of 300. She was so close. Could you imagine an Oscar-winning genius Olympian? But just the fact that she got to 24th place and she'd only been training for like two years in archery, like that's, that's, that's amazing. You go, girl. Then Gina Davis went back to television, also known as TV, with The Gina Davis Show. It was her own sitcom on ABC, but was canceled after only one season. Then she was in Commander in Chief, which was canceled after only one season. This was supposed to be her big TV comeback. She was playing the first female president of the United States. And even though Commander in Chief did not last very long, Gina Davis won a Golden Globe and got an Emmy nomination. But she was still devastated by the cancellation. Academy Award winner Gina Davis is Commander-in-Chief, coming this fall only on ABC. Oh, and let's not forget a very small but uh, very cool role in the very cool movie, In a World. It's about the highly competitive world of movie trailer voiceover artists. She has a small role, but there are no small roles, just small actors, and Gina Davis is really tall. Then, in 2016, came The Exorcist, the, the TV show. Gina Davis appeared in the first season of this adaptation of the hit movie, The Exorcist, playing a grown-up version of Linda Blair's character. Then it was time for Gina Davis to start taking on some supporting roles, which actually garnered her some critical praise in the film festival circuit. Movies like Margarine Prime, it was a big hit at Sundance in 2017. And then Gina Davis went behind the camera and became an executive producer of the documentary This Changes Everything, which is a documentary about sexism in the film industry. And let us not forget she appeared on 13 episodes of Grey's Anatomy. And she also appeared in the third and final season of Netflix's Glow in 2019. And also this year, 2020, that's the, that's the year that this is, she was in a movie called Ava, about a female assassin starring Jessica Chastain. I would have thought maybe you'd be shocked to see me this old, considering you haven't laid eyes on me in such a long time. You look exactly the same age. It's really great work. Come on, Ava. But if you really want to know what the f*** Gina Davis has been doing, well, she's, she's been doing charity and activism work. In 2015, she founded the Bentonville Film Festival, which promotes women and minorities in the film business. And for 13 years, she's been running the Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media. And the focus of this institute is to study and improve female representation in children's programming. And this endeavor actually saw Gina Davis take home another Oscar. 
the Humanitarian Oscar, which is like even a better Oscar than the regular Oscar. This award is so important that it's not even given out every year. It's only given out when the person truly deserves it. And gosh darn it, Gina Davis truly deserves this one. You. Go. Girl. Or woman. Lady. Uh, Miss Davis. So I think what it all boils down to is this. Gina Davis is the ultimate badass. She ruled movie theaters for decades. And when she felt that the industry turned its back on her, she just went off and did her own thing and gave a voice to the voiceless. You know what, this is my favorite type of WTF episode because it has a happy ending. No, her star has not fallen, it's just rising in a different place, in a different way. And maybe it's shining even brighter now. She's inspiring so many people. And nobody should give a fuck about what the fuck happened to Gina Davis. Because you know what? She's still crushing. She's still kicking butt. And I know that there's a comeback waiting just around the corner, but you know what? She doesn't need one. She's done plenty. She's left her mark on the history of cinema with amazing films, amazing performances. She changed the way the world looked at the leading lady. Gina Davis, you are truly in a league of your own. Sorry, I had to say it. I had to. It was just like it was there. I had to. Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Videos channel. Tell your friends who like this sort of content and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all your support.